So today let's make another episode of the Solid State Tesla Coil series and today let's try three turns on the primary to see if it makes longer arcs. Are the sparks going to be longer with three turns? And now it's properly grounded. Not using a socket but using this wire and a pipe, a copper pipe of a heater. And the schematic is more or less the same, just a different primary and different capacitors in the snubber networks. And of course let's also measure how much current does it draw. With four turns it drew 3.15 amps. So now let's plug it in and let's try to turn it on. 3, 2, 1. No explosion now and let's tune it. It seems to work with three turns on the primary and it makes bigger sparks. Nice! And the heat sink is slightly warm and the resistors hot but not smoking or desoldering. And of course how much current does it draw? And the heat sink is a bit warm, the transistor is a bit warm, capacitor is almost cold, it seems fine. And the secondary is a bit warm and the primary just very slightly warm. And what about the wire sticking out of it here? And a bit longer to upload. But now of course let's try to measure the output voltage waveform using this oscilloscope. I hope the probe is not going to make a short circuit somewhere and make it blow up. It seems to be glitching a lot. Let's give it some kind of shielding from the side of the secondary. Now it's a higher frequency, high frequency, it's too high now. And too low now. Now I freezed it and it seems like it's oscillating during the dead time. 
but on the other hand, there are no overshoots outside the limits of the rails, basically. Just a very tiny overshoot. No big overshoots except this point and this point, super tiny. But it's not synchronizing too well. Let's actually shift the trigger level. No, it's synchronizing a bit better. Nice. Now let's try to tune it. Now it's a too high frequency. And a too low frequency. I'm not sure about those measurements. It shows something different every time. Now the overshoots are higher, but it's not oscillating during the dead time. Let's try it once more. I have no idea why sometimes it's oscillating during the dead time like this and sometimes not. But this waveform actually looks like when the load is inductive. And this one is close to resonance. This one looks like close to zero current switching. But this one has a lot of inductance. So it overshoots because there is a lot of current when the transistor turns off. And also with an inductive load, you don't see any dead time here because during the dead time, the diode is conducting inside of the transistor, not the actual transistor. It was initially showing this waveform, but now it's this one and it's basically at all frequencies, no matter if it's the right frequency or too low or too high, it's still this. Not sure if it's the actual waveform or if it's some artifact of this oscilloscope. It's still quite a lot of black magic, but nevertheless, the sparks from it are quite impressive. But of course, with just three turns on the primary, the transistors are getting hot faster than with four turns. Now it can run for about one minute or maybe two minutes at most, and then it gets hot. And now it draws about 4.6 amps from 230 volt mains, so it draws over one kilowatt. But now again it kind of oscillates during the dead time. The dead time is probably from here to here. And the dead time is one microsecond. And it's two microseconds per division now, so the dead time is half a division now. For some odd reason it's still alternating between those two waveforms. We realized that when I set a too high trigger level, it only catches this waveform because only the overshoot is then above the trigger level. But in reality, those two waveforms are probably alternating based on how long the spark actually is at the time. The conclusion probably is that it randomly changes the waveform based on how much the secondary is loaded by the sparks. It's a lot of black magic. It randomly changes based on the sparks randomly changing basically and on top of it, it runs at one half cycle with no smoothing so the input voltage also changes and so there is quite a lot of variables and it's not easy to measure actually in it. It's really much more complex than just one simple waveform but the most important thing is that it works and it doesn't blow up. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And now a couple more sparks, of course.